Hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to talk about how big data can bring the much needed change in our agriculture. Because our agriculture is no more profitable for our small farmers, it lacks diversity and sustainability. Before I move on to tell you more about how big data can solve our problems, let me give you a reality check. Our farming is conservative and our farmers lack in capacity. And as a result of that, we are wasting our limited resources such as land and water, and we are applying fertilizer and chemicals using non-scientific and traditional methods. And what does this mean in real time? Let's apply this to water. Pakistan is already a water stress country, as you are hearing from news and you know, electronic media. And if we continue to do what we are doing right now, we will be a water scarce country by 2025. Let's apply this water crisis to agriculture, because agriculture is the single largest consumer of freshwater resources globally. In Pakistan, we grow our wheat crop at around 21 million acres annually, which is majority of that is um, irrigated by traditional inefficient flood irrigation. The agronomic requirement of wheat crop is four irrigations, while traditionally our farmers used to apply six irrigations. So if we stop over irrigating our wheat crop only, do you know how much water we can save? Any guesses? It's 10 million acre feet. And do you know how much it is? It is more than the entire storage capacity of our largest reservoir, the Bela Dam. And because of these inefficient practices in agriculture, our water productivity is among the lowest in the world. To produce same amount of food, we take 10 times more water than the US, three times more than India, and two times more than China. Another problem with our agriculture is the lack of diversity. We grow wrong crops. And how does it impact you and our country? In 2017, Pakistan spent more than 6 billion US dollars on food imports. And out of this 6 billion US dollars, 3 billion, almost 3 billion, was spent on edible oil imports. I was part of a recent study with Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations where we applied big data and analytics to define agroecological zones and crop suitability maps in the country. And we discovered that we can grow these edible oils like canola and others in the regions where we are overproducing our wheat crop and other grains. So just by using an appropriate agricultural strategy, we would have changed the direction of this crisis. Moreover, our population growth is among the largest, and our ability to produce more food is going down. And result is that we are using the unsustainable practices of increasing cropping system intensities and bringing more and more land into production to keep up with the growing demand of our population. So what do all these issues add up to? Our government is spending millions of dollars on food imports. Our farmers are not in profit. And government is giving them high subsidies to keep them in the business. How does big data can solve all these issues? In a nutshell, we apply data science into agriculture to recommend evidence-based policies and sustainable cropping practices to our farmers and policymakers. Let's talk about how big data can solve the problems of policymakers and farmers to help them making more informed decisions. I'm going to show you a video, a glimpse of what we are doing, 
how do we collect thousands of terabytes of data from a single plant to the field to the entire continent? It, it works like a farming simulator game, and it is quite enthusing that how we can collect this ocean of big data without going into the field sometimes, without getting your hands dirty, and within no time. Smart devices has enabled us to collect this huge data and turn that data into useful information. And I must thank here a Planning Commission of Pakistan and Higher Education Commission for their generous funding around a million dollars to fund our lab and to take forward the big data and cloud computing initiative in the agriculture. It is quite interesting to look at your computer screen and see water and disease stress plants and target your remedies to those only. It is also quite interesting to see that how we can use smart sensors and automation, not only to determine when to apply and how much to apply, but where to apply and execute that decision with precision. Now let's look at some of the results from our recent studies. We have been using thermal sensors. We have been able to identify crop stress zones in the field. And using that information, we were able to make site and crop specific irrigation management practices. Moreover, we have been able to enhance grain yield by 10% just by using auto steering technology or precision plantation in the wheat crop while keeping all other inputs at the same level. Similarly, in another, in an, another study, we have been able to determine crop water use and grain yield simultaneously using satellite imagery and weather information. Previously, no such method existed that could provide us grain yield and crop water use simultaneously at field by field basis for the entire country. The challenge is now, how do we decipher and disseminate this information to the end user? Because they are the real driver of our agriculture, the farmers, the policy makers, and service providers. And that's what we are currently working on. There is no doubt that data-driven farming is the solution of our problems, but how do we implement that solution at the scale we need and with the price that our farmers can afford? Because the entire point of technology is to make things easier, faster, more efficient, and cheaper. And if we are able to do that successfully, the impact can be huge. Thank you very much for your attention.